Hello, my name is Alan Foom, and today I'm going to talk about how long will it take to add new oil and gas supplies using different types of hydrocarbon development. So this is a follow-up to an earlier video that I made uh, some time ago about what the different types of hydrocarbon development are. But how long will it take? We're currently, as I make the recording in August 2020, in a bit of a crisis in terms of uh, oil and gas supplies. Well, how long will it take to bring new supplies on? It's instant, isn't it? That's what economists think. Not that simple in real life. So uh, basically what happens with oil and gas fields is their production rate declines and we need to keep investing to keep production rate going. We also need investment to bring in new supplies to uh, infill uh, new growing demand. Now there are some economists that predict a peak oil demand etc in the uh, tw late 2020s, late 2030s and but even then because of decline you still need to keep investing to meet whatever demand is there. And this is a slide from Equinor, Norwegian um, energy company. They do both oil and gas and renewables. And they're looking that basically legacy supply, if you do nothing, declines rapidly. And this is their demand range. So this is a low demand case, a high demand case. You need to keep running like Mo Farah just to stand still, running like Usain Bolt to meet demand. Now, hydrocarbon development is not that simple. You know, this is a cartoon. Go out to sea, find some oil, drink a big hole, bingo, sorted. Reality isn't like that. And it's time that uh, the public, etc., woke up to it because it's important to know and understand that. Quick thing about reserves and resources. Now, a lot of people get this confused, and I've got a video explaining this, but I'll just do a quick recap now to make uh, people understand where and make uh, it clear where things are. So, reserves are hydrocarbons that we know that we can estimate the quantity with some degree of knowledge. We know that they're recoverable. We know they're recoverable in the commercial conditions, prices, costs, etc. So current technology, economic assumptions have all the relevant provisions from all authorities. So that's where you get into reserves. Resources are hydrocarbons that have not yet met that standard. Now they might well do, uh, but they haven't got there yet. Either commerciality hasn't been established, we don't know exactly how many there are. We haven't got a firm development plan, etc. So that's where the contingent resources are. We know that the hydrocarbons there. We know that we will probably be able to get them out, but it's not quite at the reserve stage yet. And then you've got prospective resources, which are the figments of the geologist's imagination. They're not yet being discovered. They might well not be there. So to get extra supplies, we need to have hydrocarbons in this uh, sector, in the green sector and reserves. By either growing this pile through new technology, uh, new ideas, or turning this pile into reserves. This is the ENP life cycle. So you really need to be in this place. So either final stage of appraisal, which is when you find out how much hydrocarbon there is to get you the development plan approved, or in the development stage where you've got uh, projects that are drill bit ready and you executed them. Projects that are at this stage are vital to keep the funnel going but they're at the very early stage and they're not going to make a difference in the short term. They might do in the medium term and they will do in the long term, but not there yet. This is an EMP project management system. So this is a slide from one of my courses. So you've got different stages, create, select, define, execute and operate. So the key thing we need to be in the volume addition is here in the developing stage. So you've selected your concept, you need to get to that stage. Then you need to define your concept, detailed design, and then you need to execute a concept, drill the wells, build the facilities, hook everything up to get to production. So each new project that you have, each new idea has to pass these decision gates where the boards of the relevant oil and gas companies and the governments that uh, hold the uh, fundamental um, title to the reserves in, in most countries, the USA is different. Um, have to approve all of this. So once that's done, you get into firm project approval, you get execution. And the development stages have two base stages, define, detailed design, contracting, procurement, permitting, and then execution where you drill, you install the facilities and you commission. This is a slide from another video I did earlier about the different types of hydrocarbon development and uh, all the different sizes that have to be. Now you've got uh, offshore platforms, uh, floating production systems, subsea systems, FPSOs, and nodding donkeys on land. Now they're all different and they all have different stages. So I'll talk a little bit about each one of them, of the key ones anyway. 
So single windfill well on land. It's a rig out somewhere in, I don't know, West Texas. Uh, need a volume of between uh, 0.2 and 0.5 million barrels of oil equivalent to make the well work. Initial production is about 1,000 barrels of oil per day, but rapidly declines in terms of a shale well. Obviously, conventional reservoirs will have better performance. And the timing to get to production from the decision is between six and nine months. You can potentially do it a little bit quicker if you've got a rig available, but that's roughly how long it takes to add a well. And the US oil rig count has gone up uh, since the low point in 2020, and new production is slowly being added, but then it is replacing production that's declining from these fields that decline very rapidly. If you're talking about the new well pad, so well pad is a is a piece of land which has several wells, production facilities, uh, very local production facilities, and a pipeline connecting it to a processing plant. Uh, you need about between two and three million barrels of oil equivalent to make it work. Initial production would be about six thousand barrels of oil per day, but rapidly declines in terms of a shale gas reservoir. And to get to a new well pad, between nine months and a year to eighteen months. Because you need to build a pipeline, you need to do quite a bit of civil engineering work. It's not that easy. Again, uh, new areas can be done, and that's how it works. If you've got an existing offshore platform, so now we're going to offshore Gulf of Mexico, North Sea, Middle East, etc., Southeast Asia, you need uh, between one and a half and two million barrels of oil equivalent to make a well work. And initial production really depends on the reservoir performance. Could be anything from 2,000 to 10,000 barrels of oil, uh, of oil equivalent per day. And tends to decline a lot slower because the reservoir quality is a lot better. But it does take time to get into production, between nine and 18 months. Again, dependent very much on, uh, on whether you've got an existing uh, facility on the, on the platform, how you can get the rig, designing the well, etc. That's how long it sort of takes. You've got high pressure, high temperature well. Uh, again, it's an infill well from an existing platform. They're a lot more complicated. Obviously, much higher, higher safety issues. So minimum volume here is between six and a half to 10 million barrels of oil equivalent. Production between five and 15,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day. Again, depends on the reservoir performance. Uh, declines a lot slower. And because these wells are a lot more complicated, 12 to 18 months to uh, to get the, the rig, to design a well, to execute it. Typically, they take about three months to drill or something like that. Typically, offshore wells take about two months to drill. A shell well will typically take uh, 20 to 30 days to drill. Um, again, very much dependent, but that's, uh, that's very much it. So these are from existing facilities, which should be relatively quick. But even then, you're talking a year to 18 months minimum. Now you're getting to the area of getting new facilities. So this is a subsea tieback well. So this is a wellhead that's located on the seabed. It's connected via uh, flow lines to an existing facility, whether it's onshore, whether it's offshore, another platform. Uh, you need between six and eight million barrels of oil equivalent to, to do that. With new manifolds and flow lines, you need a little bit more than that. And again, 2,000 to 10,000 barrels of oil equivalent per well, depending on reservoir performance. Timing. 18 months or two years, maybe even three years in some places. It depends very much on what the supply chain's doing. And the supply chain in the oil and gas industry has been eviscerated in the last five or six years due to the oil field depression. Now you're getting to real money. You're getting to not normally manned platforms. So let's say three or four wells, pipeline to host facility, 18 to 24 million barrels of oil equivalent. Uh, if you're going HPHT, you're talking 45 to 60. Again, two to, to 10,000 uh, barrels of oil equivalent per, per well, depending on reservoir performance, export pipeline constraints, etc. So a, a four well platform will, will potentially give you up to 40,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day. It will decline, but uh, relatively slowly. Timing to get a production, three to four years, two to three years, uh, maybe up to four years. But again, it depends on what the conditions are like in terms of the supply chain. The supply chain is tight and it is tight now. Uh, because uh, the supplies have been under a very difficult time in terms of lack of orders, it's going to be not easy at all. If you're talking a new shelf platform, so this is a Judy platform in the North Sea, uh, again, a uh, project I was uh, involved in, um, say 10 wells processing tie an existing export pipeline, 50 to 90 million miles of oil equivalent to be comfortable, 
uh, double those volumes if you go to high pressure, high temperature. 20 to 100,000 barrels of oil per day, depending on reservoir performance. So again, you're starting to get into some, uh, some noticeable volumes. Time to get a production, three to five years. Again, these things are massive. When I went to visit the Judy platform, which is being built in, uh, in uh, Newcastle, in uh, north of England, the shadow reached across the stein to Jarrow. These things are huge. They're expensive, but they do give you quite a lot of uh, production. And now you're moving into the FPSO world. So this is a floating production storage and offtake vessel. Uh, in shallow water with six wells, you need to send 70 and 100. You need barrels of water in the deep water, 100 to 150. Again, depending on uh, environments, uh, etc., you're going to get 30 to 60,000 barrels of oil per day, depending on reservoir performance. Um, I mean, you could get more than that if you do obviously drill more wells. It's a, it's a more complicated field, and typically they take three to five years again to get there. You have to construct a very large vessel. These things are huge, or convert an existing tanker. Have to drill the wells install the subsea wellheads, install the manifolds, the flow lines, all of that lot, design all of that lot, and they're all, uh, it's quite a complicated design task. Three to five years, maybe realistically even longer than that. Not easy. And if you're talking about LNG projects, well, it starts getting even longer. Uh, shallow water floating LNG, similar to an FPSO in, in size, sometimes even bigger, three to six years more towards the five or six year time frame. Again, the minimum volume would be a three TCF of gas, comfortable volume five TCF of gas. LNG plant um, on land, again, three to six years to construct one of these things. Massive, we're talking billion dollars worth of investment. And 12 TCF to 15 TCF of volume needs to be available. Uh, and the challenge level of the upstream supply, you know, how much extra upstream supply is there? If you're talking about Gulf of Mexico, US, they just plug into the US network and uh, basically take uh, take gas from the from uh, the general US uh, grid. If you're talking somewhere relatively remote, like let's say Mozambique or Tanzania, uh, we have to do everything fully greenfield. Um, you're talking considerable length of time. So key points: oil and gas developments take time to deliver new volumes. You need to design the development selecting the right concept, plan the development, define it and execute the development, do all the drilling, build the facilities, store the pipelines. The time for new projects is measured in years rather than months. Individuals in existing field you can probably do within 12 months. But the key problem here is how many projects are ready, drill bit ready, at the firm project approval stage. There probably aren't actually that many. It's a complex, expensive and risky and rewarding business. But that's what we need hydrocarbons to keep society going to the way it has become accustomed. So thank you very much. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.